Do you really think that uh, wearing the armor of God, as described by Paul in Ephesians 6, is a necessity? I mean, does it really make a difference in this modern day in which we're living and the things that we face and uh, things in the caliber of life that we go through? This is what we're going to be dealing with tonight and over the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, and on the onset, let me say, the armor of God is an imperative for every Christian and it's something that we are not to take lightly, but it seems like in our modern day Christianity environment in which we live, that Christians are not living like it matters. And it seems like there's a lot of carelessness in Christianity today and a lot of, uh, of attitudes that really does not portray what God wants us to be and how do we conduct ourselves. Well, listen, if it's in the Bible, it's got to have importance and pertinence to us, so therefore we need to embrace it and we need to live by it. And uh, praise God, I'm glad that we serve a mighty God who can do all things. Now, you're going to see some things in this study that's crucial. It's just not one piece or another piece or just some pieces. It's something that you need in its entirety in your life. So the topic talk on this edition, or the topic on this topic talk edition, is the powerful truth that you need to know about the armor of God. Now, let's get definitive here for a moment and talk about what is the armor of God. Maybe you've heard that Christians are told to put on the whole armor of God. Well, in the Word of God, that's described and given to us, and we're told that. But many Christians don't actually know what that means. They don't comprehend or understand the entirety of what God is speaking to us. But see, this metaphor is a powerful truth that really we need to lean upon and need to involve in our lives every day. So it's a teaching that every Christian needs to know. And by the time we finish tonight, you are going to know. I want to just say a quick note here. I really have appreciated all the prayers and the concern and uh, that little bleep in the road that I went through here with my eye and then with my carotid arteries and so forth. Well, let me just tell you, all the reports have come back. My carotids are all clear and uh, there's no issues in my eye. I got a small vein occlusion, but nothing of, of any consequence or worry. So the Lord is really good, but I appreciate the prayers. And may I please ask you to continue to pray. And we trust God for his mighty power that he outpours upon us. We just have to put our faith in the Lord, don't we? Now, let's talk about, and we'll talk more about that in the 7 o'clock uh, session. So come back, because I want to share a few things with you about that, about the power of God and what, how it works and what he does when we reach out by faith, even what we're facing. And even when we're overwhelmed, thank God we're not overpowered, that God is there with us. So come back at 7. I'll deal with that a little bit more in that capacity. So the full arm of God is that uh, Christians are called to put this on, and it's made up of the belt of truth. I'll just jot them down. I jot them down here, and I'll share them with you. The breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And he has another item that he adds to that, and that, of course, is the lance of prayer. And we're going to break down each of these particular spiritual armor needs that we have in our life and see how we can use them effectively in our spiritual battles. Now, I'm going to move along pretty quickly because I've got a lot of material to cover, so I may get into overdrive here a little bit and shift up and... uh Put the pedal to the metal, but listen, and if you miss anything, you can go back and listen to it again. That's the neat thing about this. So let's start looking and seeing, one, why do we need it? You know, we can say, yes, 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 I believe that uh, the armor of God is important. We must have it. Well, why? Why do you need it? Well, we're fighting against the wiles of Satan, yes, but the Bible often uses illustrations to help us to really better understand and comprehend the truth that the Word of God is trying to communicate. He does that through parables like I preached on for the last two weeks, but maybe surprisingly, one of the more common, common used illustrations is that of battle and how we face battles every day and how we can win in those battles that we are facing. So time and time again, the Bible tells us that we are in the middle of a battle. Second Corinthians 10 tells us that. Chapter 4 tells us that. Second, uh, Second Timothy uh, chapter 2 also tells us that. 
and other portions of Scripture. And I'm glad that Isaiah the prophet said, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Praise God. So the stakes are high, and the followers of Jesus are really constantly reminded in the Bible that we are the soldiers that are in God's army, and it's important that we address correctly. And even to the point I may use the term talking about being dressed for success, and really that is the definitive way to be dressed for success. But this battle is different from the battles that play out in the physical battlegrounds around the world that we see are so numerous, but it's not against flesh and blood. Remember, Paul begins talking about that. Rather, it's against powers and rulers of the dark world in which we live, against uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. And uh, we are in a spiritual position of warfare every day, and you cannot let your guard down. So that's why Paul tells us in Ephesians six ten through 13 to put on the whole armor of God. I, I don't find any suggestive language there. I see definitive language that basically is kind of like if you've ever been around military. I spent uh, 12 years on active duty and also reserve time. And so when an order is given, you've got to follow the order. God is not suggesting he's given us here a proclamation or order of how we can overcome the wiles of Satan in our life. So no sane person would enter into a battle without the proper gear, training, etc. Because if you do, you're guaranteed to lose the battle. In order to be effective and not to be taken out, you really need the armor. You need God's armor. You need to be pro properly arrayed. And you need to today to protect yourself. And you need today to do that so that you can face the enemy and face the enemy with success and warfare that we're facing. So it's, it's offensive and it's also defensive. So Paul is giving us uh, some great information and he talks about these issues. And, uh, and there is a battle raging. Ephesians 6 tells us about that battle from verses 11 through 17. But this battle isn't a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle because Satan wants to do everything that he can to destroy your walk with God. He wants to embarrass you before God. And he wants to embarrass God over you and I and how we live our lives and how we become so careless and haphazard in the way that we conduct our Christianity. Therefore, you know, uh, folks, listen, this is not physical armor. Instead, we need spiritual armor. We need the armor of God, and that's the only way that you can fight to win and realizing ultimately that the battle and the war has been won at Calvary for you and I. So we're not having to so much try to grope against the battles of life. We are to be arrayed in the things that God has given us, but realizing the ultimate victory has already been won over Satan at the cross. Thank the Lord. Jesus died for our sins, won our victory, and we have reason today to praise him and to glorify him. So let's break this passage down somewhat and look a little further and take a look at each piece of the spiritual armor that God has given us. First, what is the armor of God? What is the armor of God? So we know that we need to put on the whole armor, as I just have given you uh, information pertaining to that. And we're going to switch gears here and look at what the armor of God is. So before we break it down into the pieces of the armor, let's just read Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. And so we can have a better grasp on what God is saying. Wherefore, take unto yourselves the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand or withstand in the evil day and... Having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always uh, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching therein too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So in this passage, as I read it quickly to you, uh, in this passage, the, the uh, Apostle Paul is basically using the imagery of armor of a Roman soldier. And that's what he is relating it to, to help us to better understand as a reader uh, what the armor of God actually was and then how it is applicable to our lives today. So let's break this down. What is the belt of truth today? Well, for a Roman soldier, the belt is basically 
what held the rest of the armor in proper place. If not, it would just uh, be in a disarray. So the Roman soldier's belt was a uh, really a foundational piece. I want you to remember that word foundational. And without it, the soldier would not be protected nor effective. Therefore, there's two other important words, protective and effective. So it offered both protection to the uh, in the form of a piece that hung down uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the armor or on the belt of truth, and it held other pieces of the armor, such as the sword and the belt, held everything. We could say it kind of held everything together for the Roman soldier. Uh, it's no mistake that Paul tells us that to put on the belt of truth first. Now, taking that belt of truth and relating that today, this is really yours and my foundation and what it holds everything together in our life. The truth of God is the liberator of your soul. So to put it on the, to put on the belt of truth means today that we are putting on today our faith in God's truth and what God says in His Word. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's Hebrews 11 and verse 6. And it means that our faith and our lives are found in the Word of God. If you're not building your life on the Word of God, then you're building your life. Well, Jesus used a great illustration about that. He said, if you're not building on the rock, you're building on the sifting sands. And when the storms come, then the storms will destroy uh, the house that was built. You remember that parable? And, of course, the house that was built upon a rock could withstand the, the waves, the boisterous waves, the winds, the storms. And that's the same thing in our life. We build our lives. We build our families. We build our church. We build our relationship on the Lord Jesus Christ that is today given credit and given us instruction through the pages of God's Word. So to wear the belt of truth is not to buy into the lies of the culture in which we live, and that Satan today wants us to think which is best. We go in the ways of the world, and it seems like we have embraced the term within our culture today about being politically correct. Well, let me tell you what. You need to take that term and put it in the trash can and put the lid on it and forget about it because it has no value, none whatsoever. It will destroy you. What you really need today is biblical correctness because that's the only thing that makes the difference and brings us into the to the validity of the truth of God and His Word today. So we need that. Now let's talk about, and remember, it's the pivotal for Christian faith and, and the life that is found that's in Scripture today. We need the Word of truth, which is God. And what is the breastplate of righteousness today? The breastplate was one of the most important or more important portions of armor that the Roman soldiers wore in his gear. And this piece of armor protected the vital organs, which are inevitably the blows would come his way. And if you didn't have the proper protection, it would destroy you, the breastplate of righteousness. Of course, we realize that the breastplate was for those attacks that come quickly, unexpectedly, that you don't expect to encounter, and that you don't have time to respond with uh, from with your shield. So the breastplate of righteousness protects us from the unseen attacks and the accusations of Satan. Remember the word of God says, he goes about as a roaring lion, doing what? Seeking whom he may devour. So this protection is not something that we do to earn it, Today, the breastplate of righteousness is not made up of good deeds that we do or trying to do the best we can. I deplore that term. And the breast, breastplate of righteousness is what Jesus gives us freely when we follow him. We must follow the Lord. Jesus is not your bellhop. Jesus is not just the rabbit that you pull out of the hat when you're in trouble. He is a constant companion that never leaves you nor forsakes you. He's the ever-present God. And that's what I'm preaching on Sunday in the 9.30 and the 11.30 service from, from uh, the book of, of Joshua 11, that He is an ever-present God. Let me, send, let me tell you, if you need some uplifting and direction and help and encouragement, you need this message. So don't you miss Gethsemane this Sunday, 9.30 or 11.30. But in other words today, this piece of spiritual armor, this breastplate of righteousness, 
is something that we need to have to cover ourselves, and it's what Jesus has done for us. I'm glad I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb, and I'm glad today I'm covered by His protection. I'm glad today that if God didn't be for me, who can be against me, right? He's always there. So realizing that today, we are never by ourselves. He is that friend that will stick closer than a brother. Thank God we have that valuable piece of armament with us. Well, what's the shoes of the gospel piece today? Good shoes, a loud soldier. Nothing's worse than wearing an uncomfortable pair of shoes, is it? If you're walking a lot or whatever. Well, good shoes are important to a soldier to march in battle and to have good footing when they're engaged in combat. So when it comes to our spiritual armor, we put on a uh, piece like a soldier would put on his shoes. So Paul is telling his readers to stand with, with firmly in the peace of God. What does the peace of God do? It brings today sufficiency and understanding, and it brings something today that the world today does not have any idea what it is. It's the peace of God today that exceeds understanding. And so therefore, you couple that, it's the peace of God. It's the great shalom that we have in Jesus today. And so one of the most effective weapons that we have that we can wield against the enemy today is the peace of God. But you know what we involve in our lives today, friends? We today are embracing a condition of worry. You cannot watch the news. You cannot go on the streets. Everybody's talking about and worried about COVID and getting more shots and doing more of this and doing that and wearing masks. I, I agree. We need to take protective measures. But I'm telling you, we're worrying ourselves sick about everything and anything, and we're totally ignoring and casting aside the truth of God's word that God is for and with us today. Yeah, we may go through things, but you know what? He will bring you through whatever you're going through. Put on the gospel shoes today of peace so that you can be anchored in God and you can find peace in the midst of the storms that you will face. So without this peace of the full armor of God, you're not going to be able to stand firm. And that's why so many people are falling by the wayside because they're not wearing the gospel shoes of peace. The gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Now, what is the shield of faith? Roman soldiers were often covered with uh, animal hides uh, before uh, going into battle, and this animal hide would be dipped in water. So when fiery arrows or darts came their way, the shield would extinguish, extinguish the flames because the shield was covered with particular skins of animals and they would soak it in water and therefore it would put the flame out. So therefore, it's a similar way today. A Christian will face fiery arrows from Satan and today from our adversary and realizing he is our adversary. And today he really, we find ourselves in dire need of this shield of faith. So the Roman soldier would dip their shield in the water and Christians dip their lives in the living water. Our shield today is our faith that we have in our God today. And we always should replenish it to be fully functional. Listen, you need a fresh and outpouring of faith every day. And therefore today, you need for your faith to be increased and used in your life. Jesus modeled this for us in the perfect life in which he lived. And he regularly... Uh, he would spend time with his father in prayer. What did that do? That strengthened him. It will strengthen you today. So his shield of faith helped him to defend against the fiery darts that Satan would hurl against him. Today, you cannot fight the devil and win by yourself. You need the power of God and you need the shield of faith. And today you must live by this great process of faith. If you don't believe it, read uh, Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of fame of faith and see what it did. So realizing that sometimes it may need a little maintenance, but God alone today can dip your shield in faith of the living water and give you the strength that you need to get through what you're facing. Then there's the helmet of salvation. And I have to take a quick, quick glance at the clock. Time is flying by. So what is the helmet of salvation? 
Your head is one of the most vulnerable parts of your body, and realizing that one blow on your head can basically knock you out of the fight. So therefore today, that's why a soldier would wear a helmet to protect their head, and uh, realizing that so they could stay in the fight longer. So it would be foolish to wear all your armor but neglect today and to put on the helmet. You're just opening yourselves up. I'm telling you today, the day your mind is contained in your head, and it really is the source of attack that Satan today capitalizes on every chance that he gets. He wants to, and this helmet of salvation is crucial because you're facing temptations every day from Satan to, to drift away from God or to get your attention away from the Lord. And this is not what God is pleased with. The helmet of salvation is the work that Christ has done through the cross for you and I, and also his resurrection and the redemption that he has provided. So it's because of salvation that we're able to fight and we can win. Like I said, your war has already been won at Calvary. We face battles, but God is with you and God is for you. But this piece of spiritual armor just isn't about our salvation. It also involves the protecting of our minds, our thoughts, and today to protect us and to keep our mind out of the filth and the gutter of this world. So the full armor of God then is founded in the resting and the redeeming work of what Christ has done for us at the cross. This is the good news that Jesus has provided for you and I. Now, going on, what is the sword of the Spirit? Well, the Bible says it's the Word of God, doesn't it? So all that, all the other pieces today of armor are primarily defensive, and so therefore they protect in the battle. But also a soldier needs an offensive weapon, and so therefore that's where the, the sword of the Spirit comes in. A sword is an offensive weapon today that is in the, in the hand today, and when it's used correctly, Listen, it can, it can destroy the enemy. It can annihilate every force of evil that comes against us today. And to put on the full armor of God is similar that you need the entirety and you certainly need the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. Much of our armor then is defensive, but we need this sword of the spirit. And it is today the word of God. And if you're not in the Bible, why not? You need to be in the Word. There's some things you need to be in. You ask for it, I'm going to give it to you. You need to be in the, in the Word of God. Daily, you need to be reading your Bible. You need today to be in prayer, constantly in prayer. You need to be in church. Pastor, COVID, COVID, COVID. I know, but let me tell you, we're doing everything here that we can do to give you a safe environment. I would dare say, how many of you go to the grocery store? Probably every one of you that are watching. How many of you go to the drugstore? How many of you go out in public? Probably every one of you who are watching. Listen. Friend, the safest place you can be is in the house of God. Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves to gather. We need to be in the God's house. Point blank. I'm not, I'm not being mean. I'm just telling you. And we do everything that we can. That's why we have two services. And if you want a less number in attendance to come to, 930 is a perfect place to come. But that's growing too. But we need the Word of God. We need to involve all these things in our lives. We need to put on the whole armor of God. Now, now that we've looked at all these things, you know, let's switch gears for just a quick moment and we'll wrap up. I want to end by encouraging you today to put on the whole armor of God that is an imperative and how do you do that? You do that through prayer. After we put on the whole arm of God, prayer should naturally follow. We should not leave our house in the morning without praying. We should be praying without ceasing throughout the day. It's the strength of the full arm of God when we pray. So without God, our armor then is useless and powerless in the fight. So we need the armor, but we also need prayer and it strengthens our life and it strengthens the armor. And so prayer is not, not just asking God for things that you need or want. Uh, listen, that may be part of it. But prayer is connecting with God and really realizing today that it's about not so much getting from God, but it's about employing the power of God in your life. 
So when we put on the whole arm of God, we are placing then what? Our reliance in him and, and what is done uh, for us. Prayer then reminds us of that. We need the Lord in our life every day. So to dress for success as I close in this little segment today, and I've really had to cram a whole lot in, it means that we are wearing the entire army of, uh, armor of God daily and that we are praying without ceasing. It's important, and I pray, wear the armor of God. And let me tell you, then you become armed and dangerous to the force of evil. And that's what God wants to do.